G'day guys, welcome back to Fix It In Post. My name is Nick. Today, we're gonna to look at how to create this looping texture in After Effects. It's pretty straightforward. All right, let's go get our favorite texture. So if you don't have a texture, just go with your phone and go take something that looks really grungy, like in your garage or on the, you know, the garage floor or just some concrete of some sort. And we're just gonna make a new comp. We're gonna make it 1080 by 1080 and we'll just call this texture loop and what we're going to do is we're just going to drag our texture into the comp like so and we'll just scale it down so it's just a little bit more what you like or you can have it a bit bigger but i'm just going to make scale it down so it's there all right what we're going to do is we're going to bring out the position so we'll press p and we're going to go to the we're going to pull this to the very corners like this and we're going to right click on the position and go separate dimensions. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up a text tool here. You, could, you don't have to do this step, but I'm just going to show you for the de sake of demonstration. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down these numbers. So the, the first number is the X coordinate. So that's going to be 10, 0, 4, 1. Oops, let's make that a little bit easier to see. And we'll make the Y. 690. Let's go to the other corner and bring this to the very edge of the other corner. And the number is, if I can click on the actual text itself, 37. And the second coordinate is 392. Again, you don't have to type this in. This is just for your benefit so you can see what's going on. You can write this on a notepad or something. Anyway, now, what we're gonna do is plug these numbers into these parameters here. So we're gonna click Alt or Co Alt or Option on the stopwatch here in the position of the X keyframe. And we're gonna type random. And then we'll pick this function here. And as you can see here, this top X coordinate, we're gonna set the boundaries for where the random is gonna go. So 1041, and then the last one is 37. So just to explain what's happening here, what this expression is tr basically going to do is that in the X axis, it's going to pick a value between the first extreme, which is 10, 0, 4, 1, to the last extreme, which is 37. So it won't pick anything outside of that value. And likewise, we're going to do the same with the, uh, the Y position. So we're going to copy and paste what we just had, but we're just going to change the numbers. So 690 and then 392. And so I'll just turn this off. And if we play it back, you can kind of see that it'll automatically pick a random position within the boundaries that we've set, which we set right here. Now, obviously if you scale down, this will break, but if you just leave it where it is and don't touch the scale, it'll be absolutely fine. Now that may be a bit too fast for some of you. So what we can do is add a new adjustment layer. I've just right clicked in this empty space and go adjustment layer. Alternatively, you can go to a layer and then new adjustment layer. And we're just gonna add our favorite effect, posterize time. So we go to the effects panel up here and we'll type posterize time. And we'll just drag that on. And you can set this to, let's say eight. And this will just significantly move things down, makes it look a bit more stop motion-y, which is kind of cool. All right, so we have this really funky animation here. I've put a rough and edges effect on it just to make the text look a little bit, you know, funkier, which, and it kind of gives you that little dithering effect as it, as it goes in. So we'll drag our texture loop here. And what we'll do is we'll go to the track mat. You can't really see here, it's a bit, difficult to see. We'll go to the track mat and we'll grab this and nothing happens. But what we're going to do is we're going to change it to a alpha mat to a luma mat. And there we go. Now that's okay, but I actually would like the edges to be dithered. So what happens is that I would like the edges to kind of the, where it's black to, for it to be alpha, uh, and for where it's white to be uh, solid. So we're going to actually crush the, the texture a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another favorite effect of mine, curves. And we'll just bring that up so it's nice and crushy crushed. 
And there we go. And if we turn this on, the alpha, the transparency grid, you'll actually be able to see that it's actually see-through, which is really cool. And what's cool about that is that you can use that on top of other things as well. So if we put another texture that I created earlier on underneath, you kind of see that, you know, that see-through texture, that texture does make everything look see-through, kind of like it's, uh, you know, being painted on one brush at a time. Let's actually change the texture to four frames every, we'll posterize time every four frames. I think that kind of looks a bit better, don't you think? All right, and we can put our favorite tint effect on if we don't like the color of our texture at the bottom here. And let's make this a nice, what do you reckon? Tealy, kind of tealy blue. Oh, I'm always very, always like having a bit of a teal going. There we go, not too bad, not too shabby. And what does this tutorial and this anime speedline tutorial have in common? Well, you're gonna have to click through to find out.